we brainstormed a little bit and sketched a little bit so we have an idea of the body and maybe some meaning that we want to put into our work. And I was thinking about accessories and costumes. So I've already made a, a little ring that when I put this on, I, I definitely feel that elegant. You know, suddenly your, your, your hands want to do something different when you're wearing something. Mm -hmm. When you were posing for me, you have the most elegant poses, even <laughs> in your hands. Like it's not just your body, your hands were doing really interesting things too. And you mentioned the costume that you wore that had armbands. Yeah. So it sounds like there's some easy ways to put some uh, costumes or accessories together. For this part of the lesson, we're going to need some either plain or colored paper. We are going to need some scissors and some glue and maybe a pencil or pen to draw with too. When I was thinking about this project, I was also thinking about other artworks with winged creatures, as I mentioned before. In ancient Greek times, they had these mythological creatures, and one of them was Nike, the winged goddess of victory. And she has wings on her back, and is in that pose like you did earlier with the arms back. And then another Greek god that has wings is Mercury, except his wings aren't on his back, they're on his feet. Which... I, I could use that for dancing, make me jump a little higher. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. So um, just because wings are normally on a back doesn't mean they have to be. Mm -hmm. We could put our wings anywhere on any kind of accessory. So maybe a headband, a bracelet, maybe on your shoes. Mm -hmm. So if we come back to our brainstorm, we might want to do a little bit of sketching on top of the, the drawing that I did of you. And when you look at your brainstorm, do any of these words or ideas, do you feel like they relate to a certain part of your body? You know, I know we keep talking about how wings could be anywhere, but for me, relating it back to ballet, I really, relate to my back because that's where so much of your port bra comes from and it all stems from your back mm -hmm. and so I'm relating to my back definitely and also because I wrote down strength with flying and that's where so much of our strength is with dancing it's in our backs so when I think of a back accessory I think of something that you could put either on your shoulders mm -hmm. or around your chest Okay, maybe on your person sketch, you could sketch out an idea of like where would the wings go and what might they look like. For me, I think most of my creativity, and that's what I wanted to do, uh, flows out of my hands, which is why I made a ring earlier, but also it comes from my ideas in my head. So I think I might want to do something either about my eyes or my head. So let's take a moment and just sketch on top of these figure drawings where we might put some wings. Cool. Okay. While you're doing that, I wanna talk about, you can keep, keep drawing. Um, sometimes it's helpful to look up some inspiration images. So before I start drawing some wings, I like to maybe remind myself what they look like. So maybe looking at birds like the locomotion, or I'm sorry, maybe looking at some birds like Animal Locomotion from Edward Muybridge, or looking at what feather shapes exist, like in the illustration by Adolf Milo. So I want something on the head, eyes. I wear glasses. I think I could attach something to my glasses.
you were a runner or an athlete, maybe you would want something on your shoes. I can imagine shoelaces with some wings on them. If you are someone with a big heart and love other people, I could imagine like a pin with some wings on it. If you're someone who wants to be very strong, maybe an armband would work. Maybe if you're someone who likes to speak a lot, something, well, we wear masks a lot right now. Maybe we could <laughs> put wings on a mask. <laughs> There's this very famous pose in a ballet called Serenade. And in it, the girl puts her arms back like this. And the guy comes behind her and does the wings behind her. And it's supposed to signify an angel. Mm -hmm. But that's what's really stuck in my head right now. Just like big angel wings coming off the back. In that pose, is the male actually the wing? Yeah, he, she's kneeling down and, and he is really over her, making his porta bra be the wings. I love that moment. It's, it's like a very clear picture in my mind. That's all I can get in my head right now. <laughs> can, can I see what you drew? Yeah, um, I started over here because I was thinking of the big angel wings. That's what I'm really relating to. For a second, I, was, I switched over here and I was like, maybe I need a smaller wing because I talk about strength so much, so shouldn't the strength just be there? Uh, but I, I went back and I did the other side of my bigger angel-esque wing, I guess you could say, because that's what I'm relating to and thinking of. It's within my head. Mm -hmm. So now we've got some ideas on where we would put our wings we should make a paper maquette. Maquette means a, a model, something small that gives you the idea of what it will be like. Sorry, should I have not done something so big? No, it's fine, because sure? what we can do is... Um, a little scale version. We can do like draw a person and like stick it on there. Cool. Yeah, or like, you can make them that size and then put them on the paper okay. figure. Yeah, okay. So the first thing we want to do is think about a band. How are we going to attach this thing to our body? It could be uh, a headband, so a thin strip of paper around the head. It could be an armband. So the first thing you need to do is cut a rectangle out of your paper, a long skinny rectangle. If you're making a ring like I made a ring, it would only be about a half an inch. If you are doing something that's going to be more on your body, you might want a wider one, like maybe two or three inches. If you were doing one to put like the size that you wanted, you would want <laughs> yeah. something very sturdy, so wider, and maybe connect several pieces together. But what was I going to do? Oh, I'm going to do something on my glasses, so I just need a thin band. And I have two sides of my glasses, so I'm going to need two strips. And then think about how they're going to fit. So you can measure them on your body. I'm going to show like ring measurement, maybe a wrist measurement. Think about it. maybe you need a longer piece for a different part of your body. And then you can either tape or glue things together. I am going to do them on my glasses. So I just need a very thin, Rain. Okay. Should I change mine and do ankles or something? Um, I think you just make a miniature version. Okay. So whatever the scale was, we yeah. could like imagine that's like say your hand is your dancer. Okay. What that might look like. Yeah, cool. That size. So yeah, maybe that's... you could fit your ring yeah. on your hand. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So once you have fit your ring, you can 
either tape or glue it together. So just have enough extra to overlap. I think I'm going to use some glue stick for this part. Just put a little on the end, overlap it, and press it down. If you want, you can use hot glue and it won't take so long to let it dry. And I need two of these about the same size for either side of my glasses. Then glue the ends and overlap. So that would be my structure. I'm gonna set those aside. You have your ring ready? I do, my cool. scaled down. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next part is to think about a base shape for your wings. Now, wings are usually symmetrical, just like our bodies are symmetrical. So to create a really symmetrical shape, just fold your paper in half. You might want to draw out your shape first, or you could freehand it with your scissors. But think about what would the shape of the wings be? And when you draw them, draw them so that the inside center part is on your fold. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to sketch out my wing shape so it touches the fold. And I need small ones because they're going on my glasses. Curve around for the shoulder and then some feathers at the bottom. Once you sketch it out, you can cut them out and just make sure the center is going to be on the fold. I don't know if you guys can see back there, but I have pretty good references for wings on some of the statues. It's exactly what I'm going for. Our sanctuary is such an inspiring place. Yeah. Every time I come in here, there's a different thing I notice. Okay, so I have two little wing shapes. And when you fold it, you can decide if that's what you want or if you want to trim anything. But can you imagine my little wing glasses? All right. This is a step where if you wanted to, you could just draw some details on here. Maybe you'd like to color them in. Maybe you want to draw your feathers. Maybe you want to put a message on yours. On mine, my first ones, I said, let your fingers fly because I want my sewing to be very fast when I'm making my fiber art. Or you could make them even more dimensional by creating some feathers. So you can draw out your feathers feather shapes. Usually there's a long shaft, a little curve. So I've cut out my wing shape base and now I'm going to add some sculptural feathers. So I'm going to draw out the feather shape that I like. And I could make a lot of different shapes or I could cut many at the same time just by folding the paper. So it's already folded in half, that's two. Half again will be four, half again will be eight. I could get eight wings cut out, sorry, feathers cut out all at once. Make it go fast. you're putting the feathers all over right now just to record, like show what it would be. I think I'm going to add feathers just to give it a little more dimension. Yep. So it has some of that elegance like your fingers were. One last thing I could do to these, I can fold them in half. Feathers usually have a shaft down the middle, so I'm going to fold them in half. 
and I'm gonna make little cuts to make a fringe into the sides, being careful not to cut all the way through. So just some teeny tiny cuts into my feathers. And then they become these really beautiful shapes with a lot of dimension. I can curve them and then decide where they'll go on my piece. So can you see how that pops up off of the base in an interesting way? So I can cut them all first and then glue them down or I can glue as I go. So using this handle part, the shaft, I'm going to just glue that and attach it where I want it to go. So just that bottom part is attached and the rest can become sculptural. So fold a feather in half, clip the ends, fringe, and twist, fold, bend, and attach. Did you make some feathers? I am working on them. I'm a little slower than you are. Sometimes you can use a pencil or a pen to like roll something and it'll hold its shape that way too. So I have two ready for one side. I could draw some decorations too. Or add a phrase or word. Bright eyes on mine. And when your wing is ready, you can attach it to the band. So just a little more glue right on that center fold line. And find your band and attach it. Press it together so the glue has a chance to dry a little bit. And you can play with how sculptural that wing is off of the band too. I think my maquette is finished and it's ready to put as an accessory onto my glasses. How do I look? Oh, you're gonna take off. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little unbalanced. I'll have to do one for the other side too. You were talking about solitude before, and I feel like as an artist, there's a lot of time spent in solitude, and then you make something and you hope that it'll get out to an audience eventually, but you don't always have the same kind of reaction. No. <laughs> What's it like having an audience right there watching you? Um, I mean, obviously it ups the ante to when you're just rehearsing versus getting to perform for an audience, but, um, 
my biggest takeaway from that always is that I, I get to help someone escape for two hours, be somewhere else for two hours. I think that's my favorite part about knowing the audience is there, is that we're getting to tell them a story and they get a break from their normal life, which I do enjoy a lot. And I even get a break, you know, I'm in a different town all of a sudden, you know, in hundreds of years ago, <laughs> you know, so. But yeah, there's still the, I hope they like this. <laughs> But you get that reaction right away, I imagine. Yeah. Um, so I, that's why I, I wanted to show that Marc Chagall artwork earlier. I, I think he was really lucky that he got to work with the ballet. And, you know, he got to see people enjoying his work in the backdrops and the costumes. And, you know, artists and dancers are going to work together and create something that's even more beautiful than one person by themselves could make. Yeah. And it's great when they actually connect correctly. It's all about communication, right? Yeah. Okay, I think I'm ready for my two sides now. Let's try them on. Do the dancers have to work with costumers to make sure everything fits? Yeah, so we have uh, two wonderful costumers who are on our staff full time. And uh, when we're doing a production, we're either getting costumes made for that production, and then that will fit you specifically designed to you. But then there's also cases where we may be renting a set of costumes or and something we already own from years ago that they're bringing back. And if you were to see a, a costume or the back of a costume where it closes, oftentimes there's a uh, multiple sets of hooks that would make it close because there's many different dancers, all shapes and sizes, and they need to close differently for everyone. And we are sharing costumes. So there's always that variable of making it work for everyone. And it's usually smaller alters when it's older costumes because generally everything fits for the most part. And then it's just small things like, oh, maybe it's too long in the sleeve or you need to open up the front a little bit more so you don't feel like this, like I talked about earlier. And that's why the hooks are important, because one day maybe you're on one set of hooks and it feels good, and then a month later you're on, on the stage trying the costume on again, you're like, this really doesn't feel good. I, I, need, I need to change hooks, adjust it a little bit. But uh, yeah, they're very important, very helpful. So if you're making an accessory and designing something, it might be good to have something that's adjustable, like a, like a belt is adjustable or Velcro. Yeah, I, I, I would say just about everything is adjustable. Yeah, yeah it, it has to be, otherwise you can just be stuck being so uncomfortable on stage and that's gonna take away from it a lot because then you're just concerned about that rather than dancing and performing. So I'm just going to wing one side of mine, because I'm not very quick. You're making something beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. So, I mean, you're, the paper maquette, this, this just could be the thing. It could stay just this paper object. Paper is a beautiful material, too. But it's not the most durable material. So if you want something that you're going to use for a really long time, you probably want to put it into a more durable material like the felt that we'll do for our last step. 